The fifth section of my westbound through hike of the Pacific Northwest Trail would take me from Bonners Ferry, Idaho, around mile 250, to Medaline Falls, Washington, at mile 355, and through one of the more unique challenges along the PNT, an eight mile long bushwhack in the remote Selkirk Mountains. This was the first segment I would walk with over 100 miles between resupplies, and I was heading out still fighting a case of E. coli poisoning I picked up a few days prior from contaminated well water. I started back on the trail before feeling normal, partly because it was very expensive to stay in a hotel while trying to recover, but also because I had scheduled a meetup with my partner and two friends at Medaline Falls at the end of the section that I didn't want to miss. So I got going to prevent those plans from being compromised, and because I felt that I would probably be okay, which I was. Mostly. Just met a, uh, a nice older couple, so it's nice to have somebody else out here. When I'm in kind of this fragile, weird state, I just ate some food. Not feeling the greatest about it, but not feeling like I won't keep it down either, so time to head up a big hill and see how it goes. All right, finally getting into the burn. Yeah, I could not be any luckier with the weather. I mean, this is amazing. From the Kootenai River Valley, north of Bonners Ferry, the PNT heads up the Parker Ridge Trail southwest towards Parker Peak. This is an intense ascent, flipping your elevation from 1700 to 7100 over 10 miles or so. As you reach the higher hillsides of the burn, views open to reveal the Kootenai River as it meanders north into Canada, where it will ultimately join with the Columbia. In Idaho, the PNT leaves the traditional territories of the Katunaha, or Kootenai, and heads into the homelands of the Kalispe, or Kalispel. The cultures of the constituent communities of the Kalispe vary, but the Pondere River connects them all together. The Kalispe are closely related to the Salish proper, or Bitterroot Salish, just south of them, and speak a dialect of Salish, making them part of the large constellation of Salishan-speaking native peoples. The Kalispe lived across parts of what are now Montana, Idaho, British Columbia, and Washington, and are today a part of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribe of the Flathead Nation in Montana, and also have members in the Coeur d'Alene tribe in Idaho, as well as the Confederated tribes of the Colville, the Spokane tribe of Indians, and the Kalispell tribe of Indians in Washington state. Yeah, it's uh, real interesting to be back out on the trail and having just spent so much time sitting in bed hoping to feel better. We're gonna take it one step at a time. Definitely time for a break. This tree looks like a god or something. <laughs> wind up here. After the big climb, the PNT traverses a ridge towards Parker Peak, which acts as a kind of entrance to the dramatic core of the Selkirk Mountains. You turn a few corners and are introduced to the massive slabs of granite that dress the hillsides of this range. I was excited to have tackled the first obstacle of the section without hitting a brick wall physically. From here, however, I found myself slipping in and out of feeling okay. So I just gained this ridge, and now I'm a little bit nauseous. My fingers are tingling, which is very strange. <sighs> the 
The wind carried shadows as it poured across a scraggly ridge that at times I felt barely attached to. Why wait for the next water source when you can simply drink the trail? <sighs> All right. It's about 8 p.m. Pyramid Lakes is less than two miles from here. Oh man, finally made it to Pyramid Lake. Not too much light left. The past couple hours have not really been that much fun. Whew. Today is the day of the infamous Lion's Head Ridge Bushwhack. After how like messed up and exhausted I was last night, it feels so good to sleep and sleep a ton and wake up. A good night of sleep was vastly rejuvenating, but it became clear in the morning that I was still in a strange, sensitive state. Oh man, the warm sun feels really good. I'm looking at this valley that just kind of looks like maybe there's no human presence in it whatsoever. <laughs> Pyramid Lake, where I camped, and Ball Lakes, a bit further, are both great camping options just east of the Lion's Head Bushwhack. From Ball Lakes, the Bushwhack begins and takes you up to the nearest ridge heading south, off of which the PNT plunges to begin the Bushwhack proper, but not before scrambling on slopes with excellent views. All right, here's my uh, trail here. Yep, I'm on trail. No, there's no trail. Started the Lion's Head Ridge Bushwhack. Just going up from Ball Lake. I'm already skirting this steep terrain. There's one other couple who uh, headed out here today, so I might see them later on. Part one down, uh, quite a lot to go.
spot or the uh, exit spot for people who are going eastbound. There's the cairn that marks the spot which you simply descend into the bushes. This ain't a bushwhack. This is practically the trail. I mean the trail is like nicer, like less nice than this sometimes. This is easy. I'm sure it's gonna stay this way. down to the creek. That's pretty nice. So basically as you go, there's these game trails that are, can be very easy to follow, but then they can also be very easy to lose sometimes. And they split off and disappear. And when you have to go from one to the other, man, it sucks. Especially when you uh, are like uh, having to go uphill or downhill. Definitely an intense activity. Definitely fallen a few times. Haven't gotten any big cuts yet, but definitely some little ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, see, it's like now it's fucking gone. And you could follow this creek towards the creek, or you can go sort of here. Where like, yeah, maybe a few people have gone, but it's not nearly as good as what I was just on. It's pretty sucky. Uh, just gotta pick somewhere to go. Can you see that other one over there? Not really. Someone did not make it. All right, halfway through the bush rock. It's, uh, it's not horrible. It's obviously not super amazing either, but uh, I'm definitely glad I'm down here and not on that ridge because especially with my stomach the way it is, down here I can drink water, yeah, water break and then get through the rest of this. It's like uh, jinxing it to film it, but uh, yeah, this game trail is going strong. I think there's almost just about one mile left. That's so pretty exciting. It's like the last half mile, or even less. Now, of course, this bush rock decides to fuck me up. Had a ball straight towards a bunch of crisscrossed branches. Gave me a cut on my shin. But then, of course, now stepping over a log. Just got a nice bruise right on my knee, but still definitely walkable. A few bumps and scrapes later, I had finished the lower route of the lion's head bushwhack. I actually ran into the couple whose footprints I had seen in the snow the day before, and it turned out to be Iguana and Chubby Bunny, who were through hiking westbound like me. But we were separated before I filmed anything, and then I didn't see them again until Madeline Falls. Going through a real trail is pretty dang nice right about now. Well, the trail goes over towards Priest Lake, um, way shoots way up the hill. But this logging road just goes straight down there. Oh, walking down the road to uh, Lionhead Campground, certain mental levels felt like the wrong decision, but. Uh, on the other hand, it kind of just felt like the right physical decision. Like, I just pushed myself too hard after the food poisoning the day before. And it's literally taking me to the exact same spot that I'll get on the trail with a lot less elevation gain. So, I think it's the right decision for me right now, just to better set myself up for the rest of my time in this section. Gonna make your own decisions, hike your own hike as you go. You never know what things are going to happen that'll change what your uh, priorities are. 
Walking the logging road down to Priest Lake is not an advisable route to take, but visiting Priest Lake definitely is, and the PNT technically skips this beach, which is the most scenic and only place with no bugs that I found anywhere nearby. Well, it's been a super productive dinner time at Priest Lake. I met uh, Scott, who gave me this fruit, and uh, Jerry over there. Dude, the second I got out of Priest Lake, the mosquitoes just descended. A swarm of, I don't know, man, lots of fucking mosquitoes. <laughs> oh, look who's here to welcome me in the morning. Yeah, there's Mozzie and Maddie and Timmy and Tammy, Tommy and Susan, Maisel, Sally and Becky and Jeremiah, Bobby, Sandra, Chris, Christina, Chrissy, Derek. After Priest Lake proper, the PNT heads northwest along Upper Priest Lake's eastern shore, then splits into the old, unmaintained PNT route on a disused forest road that heads further north, and the official alternate that most people, including myself, take, which heads northwest into Washington along Hughes Fork and Jackson Creek, crossing from the Idaho National Panhandle Forest and into the Salmo Priest Wilderness, tucked into Washington's northeasternmost corner. Unfortunately, on my last day in Idaho, rising temperatures and endless mosquitoes would push me again into a fragile state with my stomach still not cooperating. Getting to the quieter upper trapper part of Upper Priest Lake. Dude, the mosquitoes are just out of control. Just killed like 20 on my hands as I was trying to set this, trying to hold the camera. Oh God. Official PNT goes that way. I came from that way, and I'm going that way. Yay, forest roads! Oh God! Well, been hanging out under this bridge for a little while. This morning was really rough. Works too hard with the way that my stomach is. It's pretty rough out here. It's pretty hot. Every time I drink, it's like I'm a little bit nauseous. I'm still hydrated, but it's just not satisfying. It's not enjoyable. Just need the strength to go on another 10 miles or so. Okay, after being so exhausted, got a little bit of energy back. Sometimes that's all you need, just a little bit to keep going. The trail is so much nicer here. These big cedars, there's barely any bugs. The forest just before the Idaho-Washington border had truly lovely old growth cedar. And as I walked past them, needles and debris floated down from the canopy, shining in the darkness. Misery suddenly gave way to gratitude. And that rare awe that waits around the next corner if we keep trying to connect to the land. The day was far from over and this pattern would repeat. about done it. A few more steps and I'll be in my home state of Washington. 
no offense Idaho, but uh, I'm not gonna miss you. <laughs> Idaho is gonna make me crawl. It's gonna make me crawl out of it. Why are you doing this to me, Idaho? 3,000 feet on the PNT. 3,000 feet on the PNT. Every day you'll climb a thousand feet. And the next day you will too. But yeah, it's pretty cool to be in my home state, finally. I mean, obviously the trip still has more than half the mileage to go, but for me now I can think of it mentally as like, I'm in Washington. I get to, I get to see what it's like to walk east-west across my home state. I always wanted to spend more time in the Colville National Forest and the Okanagan Highlands, and that's where I'm pretty much getting to. So it's pretty cool. I think I can go back into a gear somehow, some way. This rock looks like uh, nothing I've ever seen before. <laughs> this trail is messed up. Like, I'm never gonna complain about a 2,000 foot climb ever again, that's for sure. Oh, these, um, I ate these wheat thins, basil. I just imagined eating a deep dish pizza in Chicago. Um, I'm in Chicago, eating a deep dish pizza. <sighs> About to finally gain the ridge of this highest area after the whole day. Struggling with mosquitoes and then climbing the endless hill out of Idaho and into Washington. What's unique about the PNT is you have so many different struggles throughout the day in so many different types of places, but the likelihood is in the evening you'll be in these places that are just so full and bursting with life. There's just so much plant life exploding all around you, lit up and moving in the wind and the sun. Just radiant, green, everywhere. Flooding the trail sometimes, spilling over all the edges. Every foot of air has a bug buzzing around in it that's catching the light too. It's just a million dancing flies and mosquitoes and bees and spiders and spider webs crossing, catching the light grass softly swaying, thrushes calling. I think this uh, trail might be the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> all right, all my chores have been finished. The sun is just setting. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a few bugs here. Just a few little bugs to say goodnight to. Good night. PNT's tough, but I think I'm gonna do it. I hope so. The fourth and final day in this section would take me southwest on the Shed Roof Divide Trail past Round Top Mountain and out of the Salmo Priest Wilderness into the Colville National Forest, where the official PNT alternate I was on headed west over a burn, then descended to Sullivan Lake, which it traversed the east side of before at last reaching the Sullivan Lake Road, which led to Washington State Route 31 in Medaline Falls. Objects, places, you know, things, a vision, 
a dream, an idea, an experience. The world is just far too dense. Sometimes I see something that just looks special. A bridge of lichen, the red strands coming up, lit in the dark forest. Of course, the bare grass dusts you with its pollen. Making it down to a road. It felt like the thick of it. Huh. I think this is the right way. Why would I have thought that's the right way? It's like due east. <laughs> Dude, this is not good. After drinking a liter of water, I almost like feel like I'm in shock or something. My mouth was salivating. I can barely move up this hill. Okay, I feel a lot better. I uh, switched my camera to be on the uh, chest, lenses on the hip. Also just needed time to digest that water, I guess. I got five miles of ridge walking. Then the trail goes downhill towards a creek that I believe then meets up with Lake Sullivan. And the lake can only be so steep, right? It all seems doable. Oh, I'm so glad that I feel a little bit better. It's just the phases with this thing are pretty intense. Section. I just got five miles to Sullivan Lake, and I'll walk along the lake, and then I'll walk into town, probably, if I'm not dead exhausted. Welcome to lunchtime of the fucked up. It's kind of what it feels like sometimes, just sitting here totally filthy, flies crawling all over you. Been having a conversation with this guy for a while. Today I actually ate the rest of my meat and cheese. For whatever reason, peanut butter almost made me throw up, but meat and cheese go down just fine. I sprinkled a bunch of uh, the Maui Hawaiian barbecue chips in there. Hmm, it's like a Crunchwrap Supreme.
to the trailhead. Now it's time for a walk around the lake. This is uh, April and Randy, or Goat and Toad, and they fed me steak and salad here down at Lake Sullivan Campground, which was absolutely amazing. So thank you, Pleasure. thank you very much. Well, some pretty awesome trail magic, courtesy of Goat and Toad, and a good test for my stomach. So far, it's feeling good. They also gave me a huckleberry soda, which was really nice. Walk along the lake, they said. Surely it'll be shaded and flat. Well, it would be on that side. But this side is just in the sun constantly, which is really hot. It's always something in the PMT. Never been more excited for a road walk in my life. Come to me, sweet motel room. <laughs> Just uh, crushing a quick seven mile road walk before bed. State Highway 31. Just a couple more miles to go. The um, hotel is a few miles outside of town, but you get there before town, so that's why I'm eating this. Considering, thanks to Trail Magic earlier, I already had the steak and the eggs, or the steak and the uh, salad. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Alright, I'm all spruced up here outside the Circle Motel. Medaline Falls is a small former mining town that sits on the Ponderay River's east bank. Just a few hundred people live in Medaline Falls today, but it has a surprising amount of historic buildings, like the Washington Hotel, where most hikers will likely look to stay on their way through, and the Cutter Theater, which was built as the town's schoolhouse in 1912 and designed by the architect Kirtland Cutter from Spokane. I'm in the upper floor, the third floor of the Cutter Theater building, which is a really cool building. And uh, now it has a library and a little museum and a few different local businesses. But uh, this upstairs attic is uh, nice and cool. There's no one here, there's this peaceful music playing. A sense of uh, architecture holding a space. There's Andrew, Carlos, Iguana, Chubby Bunny, and in the background there is also Compass. And we're all hanging out in Medellin Falls. And here's the welcoming crew, Greg, Eric, and Justine. <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> my good friends Eric and Greg and my partner Justine met me at Medaline Falls and I took a day off from the PNT to do some sightseeing with them in the very northeasternmost part of Washington, which none of us had ever spent much time in. We drove north to Crawford State Park on the border with Canada and took a tour of Gardner Cave, one of the longest known limestone caverns in Washington State. Around 2,000 feet long, 
and with tons of delicate and impressive formations, Gardner Cave was definitely a worthwhile side trip if you're in the area with a car, especially since you can combine it with a stop at Boundary Dam. Boundary Dam is a massive hydroelectric dam that straddles the Pend Oreille River and transmits power to Seattle, the city I grew up in and have lived in most all of my life. The electricity flows all the way across the state to get there in less than a second. There's a viewing platform to visit with plunging views of the structure and of the Pend Oreille looking north into Canada. This is the river the Calice Bay call the Tixway. After a few other nearby walks, towns, and meals, it was time to get back on the trail. All right, well, after a super lovely time in Medellin Falls, I'm headed back out on the trail, which is actually just the road going out of Medellin <laughs> Falls, going up the mountain over there, Abercrombie. Yep, it's been an amazing rest and recovery, and I'm so glad I got to see my friends and my love. <laughs> All right, walking over the Pondere River. Well, I'm just walking on the road. It's really hot and tough. I sure wish I had some friends or people I knew to encourage me. Oh my God, what's that? Yeah, have a good drive. I love you guys. I love you, Justine. There they go. I hadn't anticipated how it would feel to see my partner and then continue on again. It was making the decision to walk a long trail on my own all over again. Freshly reminded of what the cost of that really was. but I wasn't about to give up. Each step would take me closer home, sewing a thread of footsteps, a mode of travel we mostly just get to dream about.